21st century Pinellas County on the beautiful Gulf Coast, one of the most crowded places in the whole United States. We've got modern high-rise buildings, major traffic congestion, and more people packed per square mile than anywhere else in Florida. It might be pretty hard to imagine today, but ancient Pinellas County was a place where hundreds of years ago, small bands of Native American people lived, and even further back in time than that, great mammoths and armadillo-looking things the size of a Volkswagen Beetle roamed around this very ground. It's quite a story, so come with us as we travel back to ancient Pinellas. Hi. Now in the more tranquil setting of Heritage Village, I'm Tom Iovino, and I'm here at the McMullen Coachman Log Cabin, which is the oldest surviving home in Pinellas County, having been built back here around 1852. Heritage Village is a wonderful 21-acre living history museum in the heart of Pinellas County, with more than 28 historic structures and features allowing visitors a unique opportunity to really get a feel of how our county's 19th and early 20th century pioneers lived their everyday lives. Occasional live events here can help make that experience even more real with all kinds of hands-on activities. And when I say hands-on, I mean hands-on. But today, we want to take you back to a pre-pioneer Pinellas County, to a time before the first Europeans arrived here from Spain in the early 1500s, and even further back than that. We start thousands of years ago in a time when sea levels were much lower, and that Gulf of Mexico shoreline we love so much here was about 100 miles further out in the Gulf than it is now. The Tampa Bay we know today was a savanna, a grasslands covered with vegetation and a few sparse trees. And there was a much different cast of creatures here that included the giant sloth and the saber-toothed cat who roamed this area in their fight for survival and left their bones when that fight ended. Who would have known that one of our most beautiful county parks today Boca Ciega Millennium Park in Seminole would be the site of what some scientists have called the most significant fossil find in Pinellas County in nearly a century. In 2007, a 16-year-old student from Seminole High School was just strolling around the park practicing her nature photography when she spotted something that looked kind of odd. Well, it turned out to be the tooth of a long-extinct Colombian mammoth. It was just one of many more fossils that were discovered in subsequent excavations. In all, the bones of 30 different species of creatures from the Pleistocene Epoch were found, estimated to be somewhere between 11,000 and 75,000 years old. Bones ranging in size from this big mammoth jawbone to the tiny ancient rodent jaw and snake vertebrae in these bags. The largest creature in the bunch was the Colombian mammoth that stood some 13 feet tall and weighed about 10 tons. It was an herbivore, and these teeth helped it eat about 300 pounds of vegetation a day. The next largest among the fossils found was from the bison antiquus, which stood about seven feet tall at the shoulder and had horns with a three or four foot spread. These are the bones of the most common large herbivore of the North American continent for over 10,000 years, a direct ancestor of today's familiar American bison. Another member of the group of fossils found was the glyptodon, who was an armored mammal related to the armadillos we find digging up our yards today, except this guy was about the size of a Volkswagen Beetle and weighed just about as much. These are the pieces of his armored shell. If you look close, you can see what kind of looks like a daisy-shaped pattern. Now, all of these fossils are important to scientists, but there was this one piece from the glyptodont that stands out as the star of the bunch. It's a section of jaw with the teeth still attached. It's a very rare find and has the paleontologists at the Florida Museum of Natural History in Gainesville very excited. Fossils could turn up just about anywhere, and this display case in the information office at Fort DeSoto Park contains specimens that were found over the years by visitors just strolling along the beach. And just across the channel from Fort DeSoto over on Egmont Key, this giant shark's tooth was found by a nine-year-old in 2008. It belongs to Megalandon, who grew to be 60 feet long, weighed about 77 tons, and gratefully became extinct about 2 million years ago at a time when most of Florida was underwater. Wow, 
Kind of hard to imagine all those creatures once living right around here, isn't it? Okay, up to now we've been pretty much in the domain of paleontology, which is the study of fossils. I'm now at Whedon Island Preserve, and we're going to take a look at the human presence and how archaeologists have been studying the human artifacts left behind by Native Americans who once lived in what we now know as Pinellas County. The earliest evidence we have for human habitation indicates that Paleo-Indians were here 10 to 12,000 years ago, and they probably interacted with some of the creatures we just spoke of before. In fact, the evidence we found are points from the weapons they used to hunt those creatures. Then about 5,000 years ago, the shoreline came in to about where it is today. All the rivers and the bays and the waterways filled up, and the Indians became a fishing culture. They started uh, doing a lot of shark fishing and dolphin fishing, and they were especially collecting a lot of shellfish out of the bay. And along the shore, they would break these shellfish and empty the meat into a big pot and the juice, and they would throw the shell over on a hill behind them. After a couple of hundred years of doing that, that hill became a very large shell midden. And there's evidence all over Pinellas County of these middens still today. The interesting thing is, oysters are still a local favorite food, and we're still tossing the shells aside, except we don't build mounds with them anymore. These are the most visible signs the Native Americans left behind, the mounds, or middens, as they're known to archaeologists. And there are three types, burial mounds, which serve the same purpose as modern cemeteries, temple mounds, which were used for religious ceremonies and were often where the chief lived, and the kitchen, or shell mounds, which were generally where Native Americans deposited their day-to-day -day life's waste products, things like the shells and animal bones left over from meals, and broken pottery and tools. The county landfill pretty much serves the same purpose today, and even looks like a mound too. Imagine what archaeologists of the future will find digging around in there. Well, let's get back to ancient Pinellas. Archaeology. It's a word that usually conjures up visions of digs in exotic, faraway lands. But, despite all of our urban congestion and urban development, this activity is going on right here in Pinellas County. Whedon Island Preserve is caretaker to many significant archaeological sites in Pinellas County and often works with professionals, students, and amateur volunteers in the protection, study, and sometimes the restoration of these ancient cultural resources. It's all part of a broad mandate. Well, Whedon Island's mission, especially the Cultural Natural History Center, is to bring about the understanding of people and the environment and look at things, how, how the environment and people are interconnected and how they relate to uh, not only past cultures but also our present cultures today. So by looking into the way people at one time had their, their livelihood, we can see how part of the environment has changed and give us an understanding, more of an awareness of how we may need to proceed in doing our land management and our other planning that we do make on a daily basis, some of the decisions that we have to make. Safety Harbor is another place in Pinellas County with rich archeological significance and you could visit the county park there today and see signs of an ancient culture. The group that uh, took up residency here uh, in the Safety Harbor area and the Tampa Bay uh, area were known as the Togabaga. When they settled here, uh, the main source of, of food uh, was not just from the land, but also from the water. Uh, many shellfish uh, were part of their diet. Hence, uh, the shells that remain from this food source uh, were deposited uh, into uh, what we now call the middens or shell mounds. We believe that their main village uh, was at the present location known as Philippi Park. And there's a large shell mound at Philippi Park. There were other shell mounds that disappeared uh, years ago and became roadbeds, but the large uh, mound at Philippi Park uh, remains somewhat as it was uh, when the Spanish explorers arrived here in the early 1500s. Well, the mound itself was a ceremonial mound. It was not principally a burial mound. It was a ceremonial mound. And there was probably a structure on the top of that mound 
that was used for ceremonial purposes and for council meetings. We have found out of the Safety Harbor site, the Philippe Park site, many uh, arrowheads and even small spear points that were principally used for spear fishing. There were artifacts found from the early Spanish in Philippe Park. Uh, we're talking about the 1500s. And also there were various they items, uh, tools made out of uh, shells where they would uh, use a shell as a cup or they would use the inner part of a whelk and they would take the inner part of the whelk, which is as hard as a rock, and attach it to a um, branch or piece of wood, a long piece of wood, and use it as a scraper uh, or various uh, ways of using it as tools. There were satellite villages all over the Tampa Bay area, some larger, some 200, 300 people, and some very small, principally just families. The men didn't spend a lot of time in the village. They were out in their boats and their dugouts doing a lot of fishing and then were over on the other side of Tampa Bay doing a lot of hunting. The women ran the village. The women kept the fires going. They collected firewood. They broke the shells along the beach. Uh, they tended little gardens that they had with pumpkins and squash. They kept the communal soups going. Uh, they pretty much ran the, the uh, village and uh, they raised the children. Between about A.D. 900 and the time the Europeans arrived in the 1600s, there were actually 20 temple mounds, which would be 20 cities or 20 large towns here in Pinellas County. Almost all of those temple mounds are gone. Just as those of us living today surrounded by Tampa Bay and the Gulf of Mexico take to the waters, the Native Americans who lived here on the shores did also, and we have proof. My colleague Libby Bowling has a fascinating story to tell you. Libby? Buried in the sand for more than 10 centuries, a wooden canoe was unearthed on the shores of Whedon Island Preserve here in Pinellas County. The artifact measures 39 feet and 11 inches in length, but the original canoe is believed to have been 45 feet in length. The, the canoe uh, is prehistoric. It is an uh, incredible find. One of the first that has been found in the state of Florida of, of that length. It is also the first in Florida that's been found in a saltwater environment. So it's very significant for Pinellas County. The canoe is the oldest ever found in Pinellas County. The hull was made of pine and was used by people known as the Whedon Island culture of the Florida Gulf Coast during the Minnesota period, who thrived about 2,500 years ago. Investigators are fascinated by the question of how this ancient wooden relic survived the onslaught of water and salt for more than 1,100 years. The canoe features a raised bow that indicates it was used on open water. Under the canoe, a pine pole used perhaps for paddling, poling, or docking the canoe was also found, and radiocarbon dating places it in the same period. Principal archaeological investigator Phyllis Colianas, Pinellas County's education center manager at Whedon Island Preserve, worked with local Pinellas County resident Harold Corrin, who was the first to discover the canoe while fishing among the preserve's mangroves. Since the discovery, Pinellas County has arduously taken every step to document, conserve, and protect the canoe, the pole, and the non-peat environment that makes up the archaeological site. Only a pre-excavation dig was performed, along with thorough radiocarbon dating and wood sampling, which confirmed the wood as pine, the prevalent local timber that Pinellas County was named after. It's beautiful wood. It is beautiful. Yeah. The extraordinary find tells us something about our county and its past. This county being the most densely urbanized county in Florida, apparently had a very um, great population prehistorically also by the number of cultural resources that we do find in the county. The canoe has been reburied to preserve its condition until a comprehensive excavation of the site can be conducted. That has to wait until technical and financial resources become available.
The canoe is in an undisclosed location in the preserve and is protected by state law. Well, I hope that the citizens of Pinellas County will understand that these cultural resources are extremely valuable. They're a finite resource. Once they're gone, they're gone forever. And that we can actually learn a lot from these resources. Not only the shell mounds that exist in Pinellas County, but also uh, the occasional find of some very extraordinary artifacts such as this prehistoric canoe. With this find, there will be many more questions than answers, keeping archaeologists busy for countless years to come. Three years would pass, but on the morning of March 1st, 2011, a small flotilla of boats filled with specialists and volunteers headed out at dawn to the site for a final excavation of the canoe. At over 40 feet long, the canoe would have to be cut into four sections for transport and storage in the preservative tank. For presumably the first time in 1100 years, a canoe used by Native Americans, who lived in what we now know as Pinellas County, was moved from where it had rested for centuries. Work continued to cut and excavate the remaining sections of the artifact. The canoe sections were then transported to the tank where they will soak in a preservative solution. If all goes as planned, the canoe will complete its processing in the preservative tank in the year 2013, when it will then be reassembled and put on public display at the Whedon Island Cultural and Natural History Center. Okay, I suppose all this talk about archaeology might possibly have brought out the Indiana Jones in you and then you actually want to get your hands dirty on a dig. Well, you can, but please, it's very important to remember that there's a right and respectful way to do so. There are many routine aspects of the work that, with a little training, can be handled by dedicated amateurs interested in contributing to the scientific understanding of past cultures. And there are local organizations that welcome the participation and assistance of volunteers on any number of projects, like this one on the shores of Tampa Bay. Piece of pottery you just found? Oh, yay! This is part of a grant, and it, it that has to do with actually looking at this entire gateway track that's part of Whedon Island Preserve and trying to uh, do a comprehensive survey of the archaeological sites out here. And so part of the project uh, will be with an archaeological consultant, but the other part is part of this project using volunteers and the public to come out here and actually take part in restoring this mound. And while we're doing this, uh, by filling in the looter holes with sandbags and bringing back the uh, the shell and the sand into uh, a natural contour of the way the land was at one time, uh, we're also investigating the looter holes to get a little bit more information about the people that once inhabited this area. The Florida Public Archaeology Network is a, is a network of, of professional archaeologists. Each center is run, is directed by a professional archaeologist, usually a registered professional archaeologist. The intent is to bring the professionals in the area together with amateurs and students to try and preserve and protect archaeological resources. We get involved in local projects, work with local groups in terms of recording and preserving archaeological resources. Also work with folks like Phyllis here at Green Island uh, to try and preserve and protect these archaeological resources. We're losing them to uh, development, we're losing them to natural attrition, uh, we're losing them to looters. And what we're trying to do is protect and preserve as many of these resources as we can for the future. We're trying to be the bridge between the local chapters of the Florida Anthropological Society, local universities, community colleges, uh, but we also deal quite heavily with public schools and home schools and, and charter schools. So we're trying to bring all of the segments of education in Florida together, not just university students, out to appreciate Florida's archaeological past. This site has been damaged very heavily by looting activities, by illicit digging, by people who are looking for artifacts, either for personal gain or for sale. So what we're trying to do is fill in some of the damage, document some of the, the destruction that has been done to the site. We have a group of volunteers, uh, some students from the University of South Florida, some interested citizens and members of the Central Gulf Coast Archaeological Society uh, out helping us uh, restore and protect this archaeological resource. 
The Central Gulf Coast Archaeological Society also welcomes volunteers of all ages and experience levels. I started out being very interested in the prehistoric cultures of Florida and I had heard there were mounds in, in Florida but I really thought they were gone. So I also thought the evidence of all the prehistoric cultures were gone but they're really not. Yes, you can see they're, they're everywhere. I found out there are still mounds, there is still evidence and I could be a part of helping to contribute to the new data and help with the digging and the screening, which I love to do. Have you all done much of the screening and working on site? This is actually my first time. Go ahead. Yeah. Hands-on training. Yeah. After I got involved in that way, I started realizing that the things that I didn't know before, the general public didn't know either. And then I got a real interest in uh, wanting to help educate the public about the Florida heritage and what was here before for thousands and thousands of years before we came. We're such newcomers, you know, to Florida. Well, I decided to get involved with it because I've always been interested in history. When I went to a seminar at Whedon Island, I got invited to an archeological dig. And basically what we're doing today is just sifting through, looking for artifacts, pieces of pottery. I mean, this can basically be in your backyard. I mean, it's not like you got to travel miles and miles to see something like this. I mean, it's just in a neighborhood. It's, it could be your next door neighbor. It could even be like right under your house that you're sitting on top of thousands of artifacts. I think that it's definitely a good thing to get into. I mean, it definitely keeps you busy. I mean, it's better than sitting in front of a TV screen. I mean, it keeps you busy. It's interesting. There's no age limit to this. We've worked with students as young as kindergartners, and we've worked with people as old as uh, as, old, as old as there are people here in Florida. Uh, there's no age limit for archaeology. Uh, anyone can come on board. Anyone can join in. Everyone to their abilities. Uh, some of the, the younger students don't get a chance to do uh, much of the actual physical hard labor, uh, but they certainly can help with the screening. They can certainly help identify the artifacts with washing up, with labeling. Uh, many of them are interested in, in analyzing samples of various kinds. Uh, so there's all kinds of opportunities for every age level and uh, I know any, any, any interest level. It's not just field work. It's lab work. It's background research. It's historic research. There's all kinds of things that are possible. Finding artifacts from the distant past here in Pinellas County is not all that uncommon. Sometimes it happens by educated research and sometimes it happens by pure luck. Remember all those fossils from Boca Ciega Millennium Park we saw earlier? Those were discovered by someone just strolling through the park taking pictures. And those other fossils we saw in the case at Fort DeSoto Park were mostly found by people just walking on the beach. Now, this ancient knife, said to be 6,000 years old, was found while a city work crew was building a playground shelter in Safety Harbor. And this 5,000-year-old spear point was found by an 8-year-old walking by a storm shore construction site, also in Safety Harbor. There might be an archaeological site in your backyard, for all you know that you might stumble on someday while you're planting a tree or something. A couple of important points to keep in mind about that. If you ever find human bones, stop immediately and you must contact law enforcement so they can begin an investigation to determine whether you have an archeological site there or a crime scene. And if you find a point or some pottery, it'd be real helpful if you leave it right where it is in the ground and call someone like the folks at Weedon Island Preserve who can get an archaeologist there. The important concept here is called provenience, or sometimes provenance, which lets archaeologists study the artifact in its original context. For example, what kind of soil it was found in and how deep it was buried. This kind of information can be extremely important to the artifact's analysis. We said there's a right and respectful way to do archaeology. There's also a legal aspect to it. You have to respect private property and you certainly just can't go onto a site in our parks or preserves and start digging. Though today's archaeologists are very aware of the cultural sensitivities involved with their work, and most are committed to a strict code of ethics, vandalism and looting of sites by people seeking commercial gain is a widespread problem that continues to plague archaeology. Well, looting is actually uh, stealing knowledge that we have from the past. Uh, it destroys the context of how archaeologists can actually find out about the early peoples. But once a site is looted, 
uh, it takes away all the information that you would call um, in context or in provenience, so we're not able to get near the information from it that we would have been able to. One of the things that we have found throughout some of these out areas in Pinellas County is that have archaeological sites, they have been heavily looted. And sometimes people don't realize they're actually trespassing the law to loot these sites. Uh, we're on the preserve, we're on state land actually, and these sites should be protected. These things are a finite um, area. Once they're gone, they're gone forever. So looting is something that we just need to make people aware of, they don't need to do. And if simply doing the right thing isn't enough, then consider this. Here at the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office and Environmental Lands Unit, we take the protection of our archaeological sites very seriously. Pinellas County and the state of Florida have uh, ordinances and state laws to protect those sites and those articles that are found on those properties. The Sheriff's Office will enforce these rules and laws quite heavily. If anyone is caught uh, molesting these areas, etc., there are several options that the Sheriff's Office has in handling as far as ordinances go. Uh, penalties that can actually extend from uh, a simple ordinance violation, which is a fine amount, to a misdemeanor, which is actually going to involve uh, more costly fines and all the way up to uh, spending time in jail. There are many other ways to indulge in experiencing the past. One way is to visit the Native American sites that still exist in our area. Many of the most visible sites, like mounds, have long since been lost to development in Pinellas County. Like this one, it used to be at the site of what was once Mound Park Hospital, which is now where Bayfront Medical Center in downtown St. Petersburg stands. Some residential homes literally sit on top of ancient mounds that weren't flattened and are still visible. And many of the shell mounds were bulldozed and used for roadbed material way back when, so in some places, your car is driving over the shells left over from Native American dinners hundreds of years ago. Some mounds still remain and are protected, though. The Tokabaga Temple Mount at Philippi Park in Safety Harbor. The Jungle Prada Mound sits in a St. Petersburg Park. The Pinellas Point Temple Mound remains in the middle of a residential community and is another of the few temple mounds still relatively intact. Maximo Park at the southern end of Pinellas County still shows signs of the mound complex that comprised the Native American village believed to have been abandoned before the arrival of Spanish conquistadors. A short drive over the Sunshine Skyway Bridge to Manatee County will get you to the Madeira Bickel Temple Mound site, which was the first to be designated a state archaeological site. And not far away in the Emerson Point Preserve, you could visit the Poravent Mound site, which has construction features that are generally uncommon to mounds in the southeast. Head north of Pinellas County for a short day trip to Citrus County, and you can visit the Crystal River Archaeological Site, which is a six-mound complex dating back to 200 B.C. and has been designated a National Historic Landmark. Interpretive signage at many of these sites will help tell the story of the people who built these mounds and how they lived. I think that archaeology is, number one, is very interesting, but it's also a finite uh, science. Because of the major development that we have in the county, uh, we need to try to preserve the archaeological sites that are here, that were part of the Native Americans that lived here hundreds and thousands of years ago. When you visit these mounds, please respect the sites. Appreciate that you're standing right where an ancient chief once lived, or spiritual ceremonies were held. Try to imagine the ancient cultures that once lived on that very ground. And though nothing like mounds may be readily visible, you could also visit areas we know were sites of Native American habitation and get a sense of the places our early residents called home. The boardwalks and hiking trails at Weedon Island Preserve will take you through a number of habitats and you can even canoe or kayak the same waters and see things still almost pretty much as they did. Another way is to visit local museums and education centers, and a great place to start is the Whedon Island Preserve Cultural and Natural History Center. The center was designed with significant input from Florida's Native American community and received a traditional blessing during the dedication ceremony. The Whedon Island Preserve Cultural and Natural History Center is one of the main centers for local archaeological study in the Tampa Bay area. The Connecting People and Place exhibit ties together human interaction with the environment from ancient times to the present.
Special exhibitions displaying cultural handiwork and contemporary art have brought us a better understanding and appreciation for the early people of the Americas. And the center regularly hosts lectures featuring eminent archaeologists who discuss past and current discoveries in the field. And all of this is open and available to the general public. So Weed Island Preserve is a fantastic resource for the people of Pinellas County and also visitors to the area. There are terrific uh, natural resources here, animals, the plants, uh, and there's also history, the history of the American Indians that once lived in this part of Florida. The Weed Island Preserve Cultural and Natural History Center hosts many events and exhibitions that help foster an appreciation and understanding of ancient cultures, such as this one, which featured a contemporary weaving tradition that goes back millennia to Mayan civilization. The heart breath flute extravaganza celebrated Native American music. In this exhibition of the works of local St. Petersburg artist, Herman Trapman, who says his interest in the past was stimulated by an interesting find. Uh, when I was a kid, I found uh, material from this ancient culture. Actually, when I was nine years old, I found a mammoth toe bone. I didn't know it was, but I found a mammoth toe bone. It turned out that that's a mammoth toe bone was actually worked by ancient people uh, all that long ago in, in the St. Petersburg area. Uh, what happened then is that, that excited me about the past of this area because there's an unseen past. And so I really got interested in that past and suddenly that past became something I wanted to visualize. And earlier, we heard Richard Estabrook say there was no age limit on archaeology. And his after-school program at Weedon Island called Project Archaeology is another example of the resources sometimes available in our area for all ages. Another great resource presenting the story of the local Native American presence in Pinellas County is the Safety Harbor Museum of Regional History. Other historical resources in Pinellas County include Heritage Village in Largo, the North Pinellas Historical Museum in Palm Harbor, the Gulf Beaches Historical Museum in St. Pete Beach, the St. Petersburg Museum of History, the Science Center of Pinellas with its recreated Native American village. Other nearby resources include the Tampa Bay History Center and the Museum of Science and Industry in Tampa, and the South Florida Museum in Bradenton. A real interesting and fun way to learn history is at live events with demonstrations and hands-on activities. These events sometimes occur at various times of the year in various places, so keep your eyes open for announcements. But March is the peak of this kind of activity because it's when Florida Archaeology Month is celebrated annually. There are usually many events going on all over Florida and the Tampa Bay area in general, including the Weedon Island Preserve Cultural and Natural History Center. Depending on what's being offered year to year, you might get a chance to experience things like pottery making, flint napping spear points and arrowheads, ancient fire building techniques. You can get to see how ancient tools are made and used, or even try your hand at spear throwing using the unique atlatl. Of course, the internet has all kinds of resources available. You can always experience archaeology from the comfort of home and investigate local artifacts on Weedon Island Preserve's interactive website featuring artifacts found here in Pinellas County and from other parts of Florida. Well, I hope you've enjoyed your time with us and that you realize we can't possibly tell you the whole story of ancient Pinellas in this short program, but maybe we've gotten you interested in doing some more exploring on your own. Remember that new discoveries are always being made that can change old theories and shed new light on history. And who knows, maybe you'll be the one who finds that artifact that brings us a whole new understanding of the way things were. Just please always remember that there's a right and a respectful way to explore the past. From Weedon Island Preserve, I'm Tom Iavino. Thanks for joining us.